Insim's Terra and Alma simulators. All of them feature our haptic system. Why? Well, that's very simple. Every single person who has tested our system says the same thing. That's one of the main features that makes our simulator so realistic and the experience so visceral. And that's because we use four butt kickers, two underneath the seat, and other two underneath your pedals that feed information coming from the engine, drivetrain, as well as from each tire independently. Some of those things you cannot even feel on uh, the steering wheel or see in screen. And some things you can actually feel them before you could ever uh, feel on those uh, two devices. We've devised this system where we unplugged the butt kickers that are in the simulator. We got four extra butt kickers and with the boxes and trays and sand, we attach the butt kicker to the trays and now you'll be able to visually understand how the system works. So that's all good in theory, but uh, the good stuff is actually sitting down and giving it a proper try. So let's go. We're finally sitting on a simulator and now we are setting this up. Um, what happens here as well is you can see just how much intensity, how much strength we're applying to each of these effects. So we can change that as well. We can also change the frequencies. So how quickly does the vibration happen? And as you will notice uh, in a bit, you can clearly feel that the vibration for loss of traction is different from the vibration of the uh, suspension uh, vibration. So, uh, and here it's the sensitivity, so the level at which it actuates. I guess one of the easiest ones would be engine RPM, where we go on track. And we can really feel through the chassis the engine RPM of the car is pretty awesome. Gear shift is also pretty cool. So every time we shift a gear, we will feel a, a slight bump. So we're back in track now. We are going to activate the tire lock. And now the tires are pretty cold and uh, this should be interesting. So to start with, uh, if we go really fast, if we, we do um, a really fast uh, startup here, as you can see, we have some vibrations on the rear tires, obviously being a uh, rear wheel drive racing car. And now let's see what happens. So if we have understeer, you might have noticed that that tire understeered before this one. And that's why, that's exactly what happened. So you can really feel, you have a sense for the, the, the edge of traction, even on high speed corners. So, here, for example, you felt the, the left one first. As I was braking, you could feel that the fronts were locking before the rears. So we're having quite a lot of understeer and then oversteer. So as you can see, it's pretty much immediate. There's very little input lag and you can really feel the traction in all four tires independently. So if I brake here and turn in, you could literally feel that one first, and then uh, you felt that the car started uh, oversteering. And in these slower uh, corners, if you brake, you can really feel that that one is locking first. And that is exactly what the kind of information you need to go fast. So now I'll be uh, getting suspension vibration as well. And uh, let's tr throw gear shift. It's uh, a very cool one to have as well. So let's go again. That was tire slip. And now we're having a lot of the vibrations. Obviously the Nordschleife, you have a lot of curves, you have a lot of vibration on the track itself. And you can clearly see how you would feel the curves. So maybe you notice visually and also obviously with the sand, the sound actually makes it more noticeable that the vibrations are of different um, 
frequencies. So when you touch stuff with your tires, you can definitely feel the difference between touching a curb or losing traction. So it doesn't get confusing. So now we're uh, going to only activate ABS. We are sitting on a GT3 car. It can be very useful to actually know when it activates ABS, just to tweak it. So let's uh, give this a try. Only ABS is on, so we didn't feel that wheel spin just now. And let's see. So that was ABS straight away. So let's see how the car behaves at the end of uh, this uh, straight over here. And in theory, it will allow us to brake just before ABS is activated. So let's say I activate it straight away. We can threshold brake. And allow the, the wheels to turn freely on corner entry. So now, as you can see, understeer is not activating it. But we can try it now. Uh, switch tire lock on. And let's see exactly what happens now. So now, once we go in, if we overdo it, the front ones are vibrating. Obviously, they are the ones sliding. But if we oversteer, we can clearly uh, feel the vibrations on the back. So, for example, here, we can make all vibrate. Plus, we still have that ABS. So if ABS is on, you can feel it. So again, this will make driving a lot, a lot cooler. So you can feel where you're losing traction as well as feel when you went a bit too far on the brakes. So now we can add the gear shift, ABS, entire lock and see, see how that goes. Take a look at all four mud kickers, what they are doing while we are driving and how they actually assist on the driver. And as you can tell, you can really, really understand the car. That one is sliding, that one isn't and also uh, uh, helps you adjusting your setup. Thank you very much for watching. This has been a lot of fun, as it always is, driving an IMSIM simulator. And, uh, you know, leave any questions you have on comment sections in all our social media or uh, YouTube. And we'll be looking forward to even creating newer content that you might use to learn a bit more and maybe even implement some of these ideas on your home setups. So um, thank you for watching and until next time.